Good morning and welcome to uh, the London Parents Forum. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at how to prepare your child to thrive at boarding school. And I'm delighted to welcome an incredibly experienced panel. Uh, we've got three heads of boarding and pastoral care at uh, Junior King's Canterbury, St Edmund's College uh, and Prep School, and the Dragon School in Oxford, plus Harry Cobb, Director of Bernice McFarlane. Uh, and uh, throughout... The, uh, we've had plenty of questions in advance, but but throughout the um, this morning's forum, could you please put your questions in the Q and A box at the bottom, and all our panelists uh, will be answering questions as we go along, and then we'll have a session, a, a, an extended session of Q and A at the end, uh, when we'll we'll ask some of the questions that have been asked in advance, and also some of the questions that you ask uh, as we go along. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm going to welcome St Edmunds College and Prep School. Uh, Paul Curran is Deputy Head Pastoral there, and he's going to be accompanied by two students, uh, one male, one female, of different ages, who are going to tell you about boarding at what, what I think is England's oldest Catholic school. But Paul will correct me if, that, if that's wrong. Good morning, Guy. Yes, no, that's exactly correct. Yes, uh, we are St Edmunds College in Ware in Hertfordshire, and we are indeed England's oldest Catholic school. Um, and it's a real pleasure for us to be here today and to, and to be talking to you all. Uh, I am Deputy Head Pastoral here at St Edmunds, and I'm joined here in Martina's bedroom by Martina herself and also Anthony. Uh, Martina is a Rhetoric 1 student, that's what we call our Year 12s essentially, and uh, Anthony is Syntax, in other words, Year 10. And uh, we are here today basically to give you a little bit of an insight into what boarding is like here at St Edmunds College. Uh, but I'm also very aware that um, I will give you a very brief introduction into what type of school we are, but actually the important information you'll get from the people who actually live it every day. So we are, as, as Guy said, England's oldest Catholic school. We are a school of 650 students uh, just on the just outside of London. So and uh, we basically have about 100 boarders, two, two houses, a boys house and a girls house. So they have a really strong community uh, of those students who basically go to boarding then every evening. The majority of those just about are full boarders. They're here seven days a week. But we also have an incredibly vibrant community then of weekly boarders and flexi boarders from all over the place that come and really can contribute to that uh, community every day of the week. So what I thought would be most useful for you, for you as parents, as I say, is to actually hear from the people that matter. In other words, Martina and Anthony. Uh, so I'm going to ask them a couple of questions. We haven't actually rehearsed the answers because I want it to be as honest as possible, but therefore I'm just hoping nothing goes frightfully wrong. And, um, and basically, hopefully we can deal with some of the amazing things about boarding, also some of the difficulties, because sometimes it is tough, but then more importantly, how we address that and how we prepare for, uh, for arrival in September. So, uh, Martina, highlights of boarding, favourite things you enjoy as part of boarding? I think one of my favourite things about boarding is the strong sense of community and I have made lots of long lasting friendships which have been very important to me throughout the years and I've actually had the opportunity to go and visit a few friends in their home countries and it was truly great and I can happily say that boarding to me is like a second family and there are probably times where I'd much rather be here in school with the boarders than at my own house. Um, yeah. Anthony, how about you? Um, I'd say mostly the same, to be honest. The long-lasting friendships that I've created here. Um, it's also very nice that you get to spend every day with your friends and you build stronger bonds with everyone. And it's just a big community. And that's what I love the most about it. Uh, I think there's a huge element there as well in terms of the community is always going to be one aspect of it. But I think a lot of the students we have as well, then it's the, it's the confidence and there's uh, even the, the emotional empathy that people get. But uh, I might get more of an opportunity to talk about that later. Um, and let's be honest, um, like anything, it can be difficult at times. Hardest parts about boarding? Um, for me, it's, it was probably being away from my family for longer periods of time because I'm quite a sensitive person and I'm very close with all of my family. So that was probably one of the things I struggled with most, but there are definitely many ways to overcome these difficulties. More on that in a second. Anthony, most um, difficult bit? I'd say 
one of the most difficult bits is getting along with everyone because you're always going to be with them every day you come back from school and you're with those people so getting along with them all the time is quite a hard thing to do <laughs> very true i think that's what it's the same for every walk of life um so i might get time to talk about that in a second but more importantly from you guys now from a student perspective life is amazing some days more difficult other days what do you do to kind of manage those more difficult bits I love getting involved with all the um, activities and opportunities that the school offers. So if I'm stressed and I need to get some energy out, I love going to the gym, spending some time there or going swimming with my friends in the evenings and doing all sorts of activities. I also find it helpful to talk to either my friends or the older students, I feel, play a key role in helping um, the younger students who are new to everything or simply teacher that I trust. Um, I, for me, another thing that I find really helpful is going to the chapel and spending a few moments in there because it's such a peaceful environment where you can just lock out the outside world and all the chaos of being in school the whole time. Um, and I feel like that does transmit a lot of serenity and I just use it as space to reflect and pray. And you talked then about the relationship with older students. Is that something you utilised even when you were a young boarder? Definitely. I actually remember when I started boarding, I was a bit upset because for me it was completely new I had never boarded before and some of the older girls let me sleep in their room for the first few nights and really helped me settle in and kind of acted as an older sister to me and I know even now being an older student I'm completely happy um, when the younger students come up to me they ask me for advice or simply just come and sit in my room with me for a bit have a chat read a book together and I think that's one of the important things about boarding. Okay. Anthony, you? Um, yeah, I'd say given the fact that your friends are next door to your bedroom, I'd say being with them and talking to them most of the time, um, as well as the older students, they helped me quite a bit when I first started off here. And they are very, very useful, especially if you just want to have a chat and talk about things for them to give you advice as well. And what about then in terms of advice for anybody who's considering joining uh, boarding, maybe even from the age of 11, what kind of advice would you have for them? Um, my advice would be to not be afraid to immerse yourself in the college life in full, taking part in all the activities. And actually being a boarder is, makes it a lot easier to take part in these, such as after school sporting events, or even on the weekends, there are many, many trips to London and all sorts of places, or even college production, I absolutely love and I would definitely recommend. And um, also one thing that I did find is that the more time I spent in boarding, the less I wanted to go back home. So the more I, <laughs> the more I asked to like stay in boarding, I actually started off as a flexi boarder, only spending one or two days a week in boarding. And I'm now a weekly boarder, even though there have been times where I have spent the weekend in school to stay with my friends or take part in those various trips. Right, and Anthony, very quickly, anything from you, sir? Yeah, I might just say get involved in activities and things, um, things like that, because they, they really are fun and it's such a good experience to have and to do. You can see that Anthony down in his CCF uniform as well. Um, but let's say it's a whole, it's a, it's really is, it's a community aspect. And the main thing is, there's the bell for these guys to go back to lessons. Um, that it really is, um, it's, it's an incredible place, but it's also, it's an unbelievable environment to be in, in boarding in terms of how you, what you gain as an individual, confidence, emotional empathy, how you deal with other people, all those kind of lifelong skills, which are just so unbelievably important. Well, thank you very much, St Edmunds, and, and really great to see inside uh, a room as well, and a uh, very elegant uh, montage of pictures I can see on the walls there, so, and, it's, and it's interesting to see how much you're allowed to, to put up. Um, I mean, the days when, when schools didn't allow any, any, any pictures on the walls or blue tack seem to have well passed. 
Um, so uh, now we're going to turn to uh, the Dragon School in Oxford, who are doing quite an elaborate outdoor AV presentation. So I'm hopefully hoping it's all going to work beautifully. Uh, Paul is just turning on his camera now. Uh, and we're going to meet uh, uh, Liz Hutchings, Deputy Head of and head of boarding and and, 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 a, and a troop of other guests, I think. Well, good morning. Um, actually, it's Ed Phelps here, Guy, from the Dragon. Oh, Club. hi, Ed, sorry. <laughs> That's right, and you're right, we are outdoors. And it's a lovely sunny morning here in North Oxford at the Dragon School. And you can see behind me some of our fields and they run down. You might even see the boathouse where some of the boys and girls will be enjoying their sculling later on this afternoon. So welcome to Oxford and welcome to the Dragon, which is a large co-ed prep school here in North Oxford. Just a stone's throw away really from the city centre. But but here we are. I'm going to introduce you later to two of our people who are significantly involved in boarding. But just to give you an outline of what happens here. At the Dragon, we have 650 pupils altogether on this site. That's between years four and year eight, of whom best part of 200 are boarders. Many of them are full boarders, some are weekly boarders, some are flexi boarders as well. So we have a whole range and they are split between 10 different boarding houses. I'm going to introduce you now to um, two of the people who are really pivotal to how this works. First of all, there's uh, Gus Faulkner, who's one of our deputy, uh, our head of boarding. I believe we have Gus, who's coming into shot just here. And then there's also Ellie King, who runs one of our junior boarding houses. So I'm going to step out of shot, Guy. Uh, so you've got Gus and you've got Ellie who are going to carry on with your questions. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, we are going to start our presentation by sharing a short film about boarding at the Dragon. Our boarders live with a team of dedicated and outstanding house parents in one of our 10 family style boarding houses. The house is at the center of our children's world at the Dragon. The children eat as a family, develop their social skills and friendships and unconsciously learn independence. There is a committed team of dedicated staff who provide a latticework of pastoral care. There are many benefits to boarding. It's great fun. At the Dragon, our boarders love spending time together outside, engage in extracurricular pursuits on our wonderful facilities. The boarding experience at prep school age is valuable for any child who may be considering boarding at their senior school. We no longer have compulsory Saturday school. Quest is available on Saturday mornings. This is an optional enrichment program. One of the most popular activities is the addition of paddle boarding, which they do on the river behind us. We have vast outdoor spaces and wonderful fields. The Dragon is a screen-free school, which essentially maintains the integrity of childhood for a bit longer. Dragon boarding is about personal growth, independence, resilience, and the development of personal and social skills. So I um, live with my husband, Ollie, uh, and the year four and five girl boarders. Um, we also live with our 80-month-old daughter, our Labrador retriever, and our boarding assistant, who is a big sister figure to the girls. Um, boarding at Dragon, I think, is very much a way of life, and the girls take great pride in their lifestyle and all the fun that they have as a boarder. Uh, we run the house as very much a home from home um, with uh, values rather than rules. And one of the key benefits, I think, to the, how the house is structured is that half the girls are new at the beginning of the year and the other half are sort of experts having done the first year themselves. So they really take that kind of responsibility on and love welcoming the girls and the new girls and supporting them and helping them to love boarding too. Um, we have a robust buddy system and year seven is another natural entry point for boys and girls boarding. The boarding model at the Dragon is dynamic. Our boarding starts with our juniors in small family style houses and actually the senior boarding houses are larger and more parallel to what the children would experience at their senior schools. Yeah, I, I agree. I think boarding at the Dragon is very, very flexible and is really tailored to meet the needs of the, the individual child and also their family as well. 
So um, in addition to being the house parent to the child and so therefore having a really excellent understanding of their pastoral needs, I'm also the academic tutor, which means that I can really help the school to understand how best to support that child in really flourishing. Uh, four nights a week, the girls are supported, our boarders are supported in their homework by um, a member of academic staff. And then on a Friday, we run a brilliant spectrum program, which is um, an ins inspiring visitors and speakers who come in and talk to the children. So this weekend, for example, on Friday, we had Nelson Mandela's former prison guard talking to the children and giving them some amazing life lessons. Um, so lots of children, there's different points when the, the children tend to go home over the weekend. So some children will finish on a Friday and go home after school perhaps returning on a Sunday evening um, on the London bus or even in time on Monday for tutor time. But we have found that lots and lots of children, there's been a massive uptake in our quest programme that Gus mentioned, the Saturday morning activities. So what often happens is that after a morning of uh, recording music in the music studios or um, perhaps learning a new magic trick or taking uh, photos of the house dogs as we did in our garden uh, this weekend, um, the girls will go home at Saturday lunchtime. Um, however, lots of the girls we have found choose to stay in. Our boarders want to stay in because weekend programme is varied and rich and just great fun. So I think Gus is going to tell you a little bit more about that. But also we have those kind of regular weekend rituals as well, where the girls um, on a Saturday night, for example, snuggle up with their duvets and pillows in the girls' room with hot chocolates, with popcorn, and just have a really lovely cosy time as well. Thank you. Uh, notable weekends of our weekend programme are when the whole community, the boarding community, comes together. We have external visitors who come in and provide activities and also our staff provide a wide and varied programme and actually pupil voice is really important when planning our programme. They play a significant role in choosing the activities. <laughs> yeah, I think one of our girls is actually, Gus is busy planning how to uh, run a tie-dye event because one of our girls has suggested that that would be a really good thing to do. So, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had circus skills, we've done raft building, and this weekend we've got, at the children's request, a roller disco event coming in for all the children from years E, e block to A block. And essentially, boarding at the Dragon is fun, it's about long-lasting friendships, and it's about living with your Dragon family. Absolutely. So if you've got any questions at all, um, specifically to Dragon, we'd really love to answer them in the Q&A. Great. Thank you very much, Dragon. And really fascinating, I think, that you've made that connection, um, the sort of whole child perspective that you get between in a boarding school, where academic staff really do get to see children in it doing a, such a broad range of things. Uh, and that does really affect how you teach, I think. Uh, and it's a very unique aspect of boarding and, and, and education. Um, so now we're going to turn to uh, Bernice McFarlane uh, and uh, Harry Cobb, who was himself a pupil at the Dragon. And I think he's going to start off by uh, talking about his experiences of starting boarding. Thank you, Guy. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, good morning, uh, and thank you for joining us. Um, I guess before I talk about myself, uh, a little bit about Bonus McFarland. Um, we are an educational consultancy company with over 25 years of experience. Uh, we predominantly support families in advising how best to educate their child by taking a long-term view. And we work with a number um, of tutors and mentors to design bespoke preparation programs to help uh, achieve success. Today, I guess we'll be focusing specifically on how to prepare your child for boarding school. And I'm pleased to be joined by one of our leading mentors, Lauren Williams, who will give us first a first hand account of her mentoring experiences. Uh, and I'd also like to introduce our summer camp, uh, Camp Bonus. So as Guy mentioned, um, sorry, um, I was a pupil uh, at the Dragon, so you can see me there at the age of eight years old wearing a, a bomber jacket. Uh, I don't think they exist anymore, but um, I don't know how fashionable they would be considered. Um, but I, um, I remember it very well. Um, I started boarding at the age of eight, which I appreciate um, is now considered very early to start. However, um, I joined at number 26 Bardwell Road. Um, I can remember like it was yesterday going up to my dorm uh, jock uh, and I shared a, a room with four other boys. Uh, and the photo on the right 
um, is our boarding house uh, celebrating the end of Ma and Pa Ellis, um, who were our housemaster and housemistress. Ultimately, um, to help me to prepare for this experience, uh, I had met a few of the boys before I arrived, uh, and I'd often, uh, or my parents would often encourage uh, sleepovers. Um, and working with pupils and parents now, I often get asked how we can help pupils prepare for boarding school. And this was one of the inspirations for why we created Camp Bonus. Ultimately, Camp Bonus is designed to be a week of adventure, introducing children to new activities, developing their creative skills and building their confidence. It is an opportunity to give your child that away from home experience to make new friends and develop new interests. When we designed the course, we had no idea we were about to enter into a global pandemic, but naturally we think it is the perfect antidote to the lockdown children have had to endure. And with a strong theme focusing on environment, nature and learning outdoors, it is a perfect opportunity to remove technology. As a result, the camp will be completely screen free. Activities will include bushcraft, raft building and creative writing classes. And while the camp is a great taste for pupils considering or about to board, it is also a great opportunity for pupils to talk about at the interview stage. While academic results are important, many of the senior schools these days are looking for evidence of pupils developing their soft skills, showing examples of resilience, leadership, and the ability to board. Uh, and we feel Camp Bonus offers this. Its location uh, is down in Somerset, next to an area of outstanding natural beauty in the Quantux Hills. Um, and we're fortunate to be working in partnership with Outposts, um, which have over 25 years experience uh, managing outdoor activities. Uh, and it's run by uh, a Colonel, Michael Kingscott, uh, and his wife, Catherine. If you'd like further information, obviously, please do ask in the Q&A, uh, and my contact details uh, are here. I would also uh, like to obviously discuss a little bit more about Bonus McFarland. Uh, and so at this point, I'd like to bring in uh, Lauren Williams. Um, Lauren, we are fortunate, has been working with us for several years uh, as one of our leading tutors uh, and mentors. Uh, and in particular has had great success helping mentoring uh, students and ultimately prepare them for boarding school. Um, so Lauren, could I just take this opportunity maybe for you to, to talk about yourself uh, and maybe a few case studies uh, on your success? Yes, of course. Hello, Harry. Hello, everyone. So I'm Lauren, um, as Harry said, a tutor and mentor with Bonus McFarlane. Um, I've been doing this for over five years now having worked in investment banking previously, but not really looked back since I switched over to education. So I work with a lot of students who are preparing for school admissions, whether they're UK based already, going to day school, or increasingly frequently coming from overseas to boarding school. Um, I feel I have a particular affinity with international students, given that I studied modern languages myself at university. So I help very frequently with um, teaching English as the language, but also providing um, some more deeper advice and pastoral care for those students as they make the transition moving over to the UK to boarding school. Um, so as you mentioned, I do have an example which really um, encapsulates how great mentoring can be for a student. So this um, particular pupil I'm going to speak about, we started working together when she was 12, living at home in, Tur in Turkey. Um, and it was purely an English language instructional course. We were learning English. Um, but this really evolved as we continued working together online. And she took the decision herself that she wanted to attend boarding school in the UK. So we got the ball rolling on that front. Um, Bonus McFarlane helped with the whole process, the school's team to place her, well, to, to do school viewings, to assess the child, to figure out where would be best for her to go, to go through the whole placement procedure. And um, here we are several years later, she's very happily installed at boarding school in Dorset um, and sitting some GCSEs as we speak. 
So it's really been a long process, four year process with that student. I've known her and worked with her reg regularly um, throughout the whole throughout the whole process. Um, but the interesting thing is how the role has really evolved from um, teaching English to becoming a, a mentor, role model, um, advisor to the student and to her family. Um, we still speak very regularly, but it's very much on her terms now. So rather than being a teacher led experience where I teach her English, um, she'll come to me when she has a question. It could be just to talk things through about her options at school or to run through some academic piece of work she wants to hand with, or just to speak with her parents actually and reassure them that everything is going very well from, from my side and as far as I, as I get feedback from her. Um, so I, it's, it's really a very valuable relationship that we have, um, three-way relationship actually between me, the student and her parents, but all in regular touch. And I think it gives a real sense of stability to that student, um, a sense of constancy that she was able to have someone to talk to before she made the move to boarding school and then as she settled in at boarding school too. Um, and it's really to take nothing away from the wonderful pastoral care that boarding schools do offer. I think the key difference is that as a mentor, I was someone that she knew before she made the move. So that was really reassuring um, to her when, when, when she had to make the move and when that transformation was happening. Um, and actually it's testament to the wonderful pastoral skills that she needs me less and less. So we're still in touch, but it's very much on a friendly basis these days. Um, and we, we have a chat about her plans, travel plans and her, her plans going forward for A-level and so on. Um, but it's been a wonderful uh, journey and evolution of uh, working with her and her family. Terrific. Well, thank you very much, Lauren, for uh, providing that example. I think just to, to add to that, what we find at Bonus McFarland is when often we work in partnership with schools. And as Lauren has, has highlighted, it's taking up that kind of third space by kind of bridging the gap between school and parent. Whereas uh, as Lauren is not a teacher, uh, nor is she the parent. So it's a, a safe uh, person to talk to uh, and bridge that gap. Um, so thank you very much. Over and back to you, Guy. Thank you, Harry and Lauren. That was really fascinating. And I think um, you, you, you raised some really interesting questions about uh, the needs of international pupils when they're, when they're moving country to start school as well, um, which perhaps we'll address more in the Q&A session with, with schools. Uh, so now we're going over to Kent, to King's Junior King's Canterbury. Uh, so yes, and we've got a, a room full of students uh, and uh, Liz Hutchins, who's Deputy Head Pastoral and Head of Boarding. Hi there, welcome to Junior Kings. Um, Junior Kings is 140 years old now, although we've been on our current site for 91 years, um, and we very much combine tradition with a modern outlook. Um, as a school, we pride ourselves on being innovative, creative and global, um, and we have four key values that sit at the heart of everything we do, both in the day school and on the boarding side, and they are respect, resilience, responsibility um, and readiness. So we're a school with 352 pupils in total, ranging from three to 13 um, and 285 in the prep school. Um, currently, we have 79 boarders, 48 boys and 31 girls, um, but we have um, capacity for 40 girls and 50 boys. And numbers do tend to fluctuate slightly every year. Um, the majority of our boarders are full boarders, um, being international, uh, but we do have a few weeklies um, and during non-COVID times we also um, very much welcome occasional and flexi boarders and um, provided we've got the space. Um, our best asset of course are the children themselves and I'm delighted to have three of them um, here with me today, um, one of whom started when he was younger than our average boarder who normally starts in year five and I'm going to let him introduce himself in a minute. Um, but I'm going to hand over to them and they are looking forward to sharing some of their experiences of boarding here. Um, hello, my name is Ray and I joined this year in year seven. I previously went to school in London and I'm Japanese. Hi, my name is Ruby. I joined the school in year seven. I come from a school in Surrey and I'm currently the head of boarding at On The Girls' Floor. Hi, I'm Susan. I've been at the school since I was in year four and, I've came, and I came from Nigeria. 
And you've had two brothers here as well, haven't you? Yeah. It's been a family tradition for Sisan. Um, starting at a new school, of course, um, is, is exciting, but it can also be um, quite a nerve wracking <coughs> time. And I think when, you, when you're starting out in boarding, those emotions can be um, heightened. Um, so induction is something we take really seriously. Um, and by that, I mean induction for both the parents and the pupils. Um, so there are handbooks and plenty of information sent out ahead of the children's arrival. Um, and we also have a handbook written specifically for the children um, in, in sort of more informal language um, with plenty of pictures so they can see what they're coming to. Um, and we also have copies of those on the boarding floor so they can dip into them um, as and when they wish really in, the, in those first few days. Um, but I'm going to let the children speak about um, their arrival and the, and the key things that stood out for them. So um, before I joined, um, my housemaster, Mr. Stevenson, had a Zoom meeting with me just to briefly introduce him and um, the matrons here on the boarding floor. I also got sent a um, form about what I enjoy and what I look forward to. And I sent in some pictures which um, are on a big board displayed of all the people, new people that joined this year. Thank you, Ray. And Sisan, what, what, once you were here, what happened? Um, we have here at Junior Kings a buddy system. Someone to just stay with you while you're new to help you get to know the ropes, know what you're doing, not get lost, and really teach you how to do the right things at the right times. Well, was it just for a few days or how did that work? Can you remember? Really, they just stay with you as long as you need them. For me, that was around a month or two. and you know you still stay friends with them even after that. Thanks Susan. And Ruby on the girls floor there's something a little bit extra as well isn't there? On the girls floor we have an angel system so each girl gets assigned an angel. Their angel is someone you look after and you really help them get through the day and make them feel better, make them feel welcome. So it's a really nice thing to join to when you join the school because you know someone is always looking after you and making sure you're okay. Um, so we have all these things in place um, and generally speaking I would say that things run quite smoothly, however everyone does have slightly different experiences um, and I know that Ruby won't mind me saying that when she started she was incredibly homesick, I think for Ray it was quite an easy transition, um, Sisan we had a couple of wobbles, what helped most? Um, what I think really helps is that while you are losing your family you're making a new one right here and you have plenty of people to talk to, I think. Yeah. And then Ruby, as I say, she had a tricky first few weeks, as did mum, I think would be fair to say. Um, but she went on, she's been on a huge journey. I and mean, as you heard, she's head of house now. Um, and, it, and it's been delightful seeing her develop um, and mature um, over the past sort of year and a half. Ruby, could you want to talk a little bit about sort of what helped you in those early days? So the matrons and the tutors were really nice to me. They helped me settle in. They helped talk to me, calm me down a bit. The house parent and the head of house last year was actually really kind and she made me feel welcome because she was a girl here and she was homesick herself a bit. So that made me feel much more normal, if that makes any sense. And also my mum came to visit for a short time. She can watch matches, but I can also go home Saturday night to Sunday, which is very nice to know that you can always go home if you really want to. Thanks, Ruby. Um, it is very much a team effort, as you you know, as you heard from Ruby, lots of different people helped her. Um, and it is a team effort when it comes to the communication here, when it comes to the pastoral care. Um, we have a huge boarding team, um, and, and I include everyone in that. I include the matrons, I include the catering team, I include the domestics, who all play a really key role. We have assistant tutors, um, a little bit like GAP students who I think the children probably see more as, as big brothers and sisters at times. We have boarding tutors, and then we obviously have our house parents um, with their families who live on both the girls' floor and the boys' floor, giving it a real family feel. Um, and the day children, all, I'm sorry, day staff also get involved. So they will come in on a Sunday um, to help um, run some of the activities and to see the boarders in a, in a different light, which I think is a lovely thing for both the staff and the children. Um, just briefly, I want to mention about weekends when the school becomes the borders really and it and it's a special place to be i think we're very lucky with our grounds um they have a lot of fun in the swimming pool and um, we've been in there quite a lot this week haven't we and yeah. um, the forest um enjoying the simple things and the space we have outside but also a range of activities this year's been slightly different because of covid we haven't been able to go out and about as we would have done but we've tried to be as inventive as possible and what have been some of the favorite things this year 
what do we think, right? Um, so we had inflatables and scale electrics come in. We, I think, also had laser tag. Yeah, we did. We had laser tag. Can anyone remember anything else? Um, I really like just sometimes it's just a chill Sunday. Yeah, we do. I think it's really important, actually, that we, we recognise that the children need downtime, particularly at the end of a busy week. Um, so we do build in just in-house chilled out time. Um, before COVID came along, um, we did go out quite a lot. And I think, you know, you two have been here for longer. So favourite trips? Um, um, my favourite was probably when I went paintballing. Okay, paintballing was quite a highlight, wasn't it? I liked the pantomime and going ice skating. It's like a Christmas tradition always, so it's really nice. Yeah, and we tend to do a big trip to Chessington or Thorpe Park, for example, once a year. Um, so there's plenty going on, um, you know, at weekends. And then obviously during the day, um, after the children have their lessons. Actually, I should let Ray talk about very briefly the beginning of the day, just to give you an idea of the children's routine. So um, we're expected to wake up at seven o'clock, but if you want to have a shower, you wake up before seven o'clock. Um, we're expected to do our own laundry, strip our beds. Um, once we've done that, we head down to breakfast, which in my opinion is the best meal of the day. <laughs> then they, they go off to lessons. And then what happens if after, after the lessons are ended? Um, once lessons are over every border, um, we have to sign up to extra end of the day activities. Um, and it's it's a, there are a lot of activities to choose from from basketball, football to art and DT. We also have horse riding and dancing, and there's golf. Yeah, there's a good yeah a good range for them to choose from, um, and they do those with the day pupils as well. So it's a whole school whole school approach. And then what happens after the activities? Um, once activities are over, we go to have um, tea dinner cooked by our wonderful staff <laughs> and then ruby to finish off each year group has different prep times year seven and eight both have one hour and year five and six have half an hour after prep we go upstairs to the various different boarding floors and we normally have a house meeting and then we can call our parents do phones and then have a snack as well and then it's time for bed yeah, so um, a relaxed evening generally. We'll celebrate a birthday um, on the floor if there is one to be celebrated. Um, but it's very much um, time to be enjoyed um, between the staff and the pupils. It's lovely seeing their relationships develop, um, seeing the children grow during their time here. And they're all ready to leave. If, if they, they look forward to leaving and moving on to their senior schools, um, if they didn't, we wouldn't have done a good job, but it's always lovely welcoming them back um, and they're always quite keen to come back and visit. So yeah, best things just to finish, what highlight of boarding, Ray? Probably when you come, it's a very warm welcome. Um, take care of you very well and help you settle in. See you, Sam? My highlight is the diversity and the fact that we have like cultural dinners and get to learn about everyone and what they do when they work. And Ruby, finish us off. I like the friendships that you make in boarding and how there's different dorms, some of them are really big and you can have loads of your friends in there so it feels really comfortable and almost like a sleepover. Thanks a lot, thank uh, Kings. Uh, and uh, thank you, Liz, and thank you, the panel. You've been brilliantly open about uh, talking about how boarding is working for you and I hope now in the Q&A you carry on in this vein. It's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, so I'm going to ask now all the panel panelists to turn their cameras back on and we've got uh, we're doing quite well with time so we've got time for, we've got masses of questions that have been asked in advance uh, and uh, and 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 do do throw up uh, uh, throw questions into the Q&A box as well uh, so I'm going to start with a question for uh, for Paul at St Edmunds uh, I wanted to talk a bit about um, day boarding relations and how that works out i mean my memory of this at school is that they would they could be quite fraught sometimes um so with our structure here because because our boarding houses are separate to the day structure so uh during the school day we have five houses and all the students day flexi weekly or full boarders they are all members of those five houses they're vertical they're vertical houses we've got prefects who help uh mentor the students in those day periods as well and then the, sort of the, the day housemaster and the tutor, they're also prime contacts for any parent um, with regards to academic progress, pastoral well-being and what have you. And then our students go back to boarding then in the evening. 
So they have, so, so the group, so they're almost, we have a hundred students in a day house, almost hundred to 125 students in a day house. And then they go back to their community of a hundred students together across all the houses in the afternoon. And that's where, that's why luckily for us, we don't have that kind of full atmosphere because they're completely and utterly integrated throughout the entire day. And then they all, they almost go back to their family based community in the evening. And that works really, really well for us because then the majority of our borders, as I say, are full. They, they maintain that, uh, that community seven days a week. I think though the other really interesting element there to your question, Guy, is also about from a parent from a parental perspective, is coordination between the day and the boarding in terms of the oversight of the children. Because whereas the students will quite happily go from one to the other, communication, or just provide one of the answers actually to somebody, communication is everything. So knowing then who those points of contact are, and then the the, the knowledge that your boarding house master is getting that information from the day side so they can look after them when they're doing their prep, know, know where to sort of intervene, or almost sometimes then to have that kind of supportive chat because they've had a rough day somewhere else because something could have happened, you know. Um, and that communication back and forth then is far more of a necessity on our side, but for you as parents, I think that's absolutely uh, really, really key. That's uh, that's very interesting, Paul. And actually, I'm going to, I'm going to continue that theme. Um, and throw it over to the dragon. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, how parents will know what's going on at school? I mean, it can be quite difficult if you've got a day child to know what on earth is going on at school. So, how do parents, with their, when their children are boarding, find out what, you know whether their children are working, whether they're whether they're happy, whether there are any problems? How does it work? Thank you. Um, I'll just begin really, we have great communication with our parents and we actually have recently a parent portal installed which is very easy to use and the parents can access all sorts of really interesting information. On the boarding side, the children can, they use Zoom, they use FaceTime, they phone, they email regularly. So there's brilliant communication between boarding, the children, and home and also the tutors play a really large part in communicating about how the children are doing so the pastoral tutors will get involved with the parents i think also um photos are a really great way we do lots and lots of uh taking photos of the children doing their activities and each week we're very much in communication with parents so on a on a monday or tuesday we'll send out an email so we're summarizing the, um, what's happened in the uh, over the weekend and um, giving lots of links to photos and then also talking about what's coming up and so they've got a really good idea of things that they um, might be involved in. The girls also love to um, get in touch with parents with email we, um, that we've got computer access to them for just 15 minutes a day we do stick to, <laughs> to a time um, and so that they're able to get in touch yeah lots and lots of ways. Thank you, thank you very much, Dragon. I'm going to throw um, a similar question to, to, to Liz at Kings. You talked a bit about um, uh, your handbook for inducting parents, which I thought sounded absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I remember from my time at Windlesham that 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 that, that actually uh, helping parents get over the hurdle of their child starting boarding is probably at least as important as helping the child. Um, so I wonder if you'd like to talk a little bit about, about what parents find most difficult about their children starting boarding. Yeah, I, I think um, <laughs> I think it's often harder for the parents actually than the children themselves because they are, they're so busy once they get here um, and the parent is sitting at home desperately waiting for that phone call. Um, we, we talk a lot when we um, welcome the parents in and the pupils in in September about trusting us. Um, and I know that's hard, but I think, you know, when you're handing over your child for the first time to someone else, you, you've got to trust the school that they are gonna look after them. Um, so we talk a lot about the fact, you know, we, we do this job because we love it. We've done it for a long time. We are professionals and, and, you know, we will take fantastic care of your children. But I think the parents letting go is really tough. You know, the, the handbooks definitely help. Um, we've had them translated now into a variety of languages to try and, you know, reach everybody. Um, but I, I think the more the more information you can give them, the better. But having that that real trust and belief in the school, and I think that you get that by giving them as much information as you possibly can ahead of that arrival. So, 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 so how much time do you spend on the phone in the evening to parents, Liz? 
Um, the house parents will generally um, be the, the main point of contact. I would say there is very rarely <laughs> where two or three parents and also guardians. I, you know, I think that's really important. It's not just communication with parents now. It's very much parents and guardians so that they are part of the whole process. Um, but yeah, I would say on average, the house parents are probably on to three or four parents every evening. Fascinating. So actually, let's go back to uh, the dragon and pick up on something that um, that uh, Lauren mentioned and, and that Liz has just been talking about, which is about overseas people starting boarding. I think this is this is uh, incredibly interesting. Um, what do you do at the dragon to, 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 to help international students when they first start? Well, Overseas students will come initially for a school visit or school tour. We have um, a vast array of virtual open mornings and videos so they can get uh, familiarise themselves with the school. Once the children um, have decided to join the school, um, they are then integrated with house meetings on Zoom to meet the children and they become familiar with the children uh, in the boarding houses, which really, really helps. And part of our buddy system is our children will write to the new joiners and they will adopt them and they will to get to know them before they start the school. So that works really well. Yeah, I think also one of the things that we do is when the children are here, we're really keen. Um, we've got so, children from so many different nationalities. We're really keen to learn about um, about their kind of customs and um, try foods from their countries. So we do lots of, um, one of the girls' favorite things to do is international evenings. So we have international evenings uh, where ch the children take it in turns to talk about, um, share photos, where they're from, share foods, um, perhaps uh, teach a little bit of language. Um, in, fact, in fact, we've got children who are so, so kind of envious of the fact that other people were doing international evenings. One of our girls who, who didn't have any connections abroad decided to do it on Iceland because, and, um, because she just wants to be part of it. It's just such a lovely, lovely event. Great, thanks. Um, so now I'm going to ask all of the panel um, a, a version of the same question, really, which is, um, I mean, this is down to the, sort of the meat of what this session is meant to be about. For parents whose children are, are, are going to be starting boarding, maybe next September or even a, a year hence, what kind of preparation would you think they should be doing? What would the school do and what should the parents be doing? Let's throw that one first of all to uh, maybe to, to Lauren. Hi. So, um, yes, I, th I think you're right. It is there is time to start preparing well in advance of, of making the move. And I think that's by a lot of open discussion of how it is going to feel when uh, how to deal with the homesick, homesickness, um, talking about that in, in advance, making sure that all the practicalities are sorted. So that could be, you know, mobile phone with the SIM card all sorted. You don't want to be sorting that out on arrival. It needs to be all um, organized well in advance. Um, perhaps having a little schedule set up for when, how often you're going to check in with each other between the parents uh, and the students. And also speaking from my own experience, um, of course, not every student might need it, but if they do work with a with a mentor, I think it can be really invaluable in terms of having very clear communication between all of the parties um, as a sort of um, intermediary, as as Harry said, but having someone in place who's going to get the true story from the students and be able to report back to the to the parents that really everything is is going well. Um, so I would make sure to have all of that in place well in advance. Um, and as the lady said at the Dragon, I think it's brilliant that during the pandemic, so many schools have been opening up virtually. Um, and I've seen all sorts of things, live streams of assemblies, house meetings and so on. Um, I think it would be fantastic for any prospective students to get involved or just watch as much of they, as they can online in advance, just to get a sense of what uh, attending that school is going to be like. Thanks, Lauren. That's really helpful. Um, Paul, do you want to talk a bit about, about what, what you would recommend pupils do before they start? Yeah, absolutely. I think the main thing for me is the fact that there's no way of students knowing all the ins and outs of a routine of a school before they come. So, so I think the main thing is 
is preparation for them to be open-minded. If they go with a preset idea of definitely what it's going to be like, if any of us try to do that about something we've never experienced before, it's unlikely to be what we really envisage it. So going with the open mind is really important. I also think though that um, there's nobody who knows children better than the parents and the parents will know well in advance if there are if, the, if their child is likely to be one of those ones who absolutely cannot wait to arrive and just say goodbye mum and dad and go straight up to the dorm, in which case it tends to be the mum and dad crying in the house master's study before they say goodbye and they get in the car and go home, or whether or not it's going to be this, the child themselves who is really, really nervous. Communication about that in advance is everything, about when to communicate, how to communicate with your child, for example. Um, but the biggest thing is, I think, if you've got a child who you think may find it difficult, at least in that first little bit, establish early with sort of fairly clear things that if they are struggling, if there is difficulty, they're gonna be going to a school, no matter what school it is, where the housemaster and the tutors and boarding and whatever are there, and they do this every single year and they know that some students find it difficult. And if they are in that position, they need to go to them because the worst thing they can do then is be, is pretend that everything's okay and then go back and WhatsApp home all the time and go, I'm really struggling and what have you. And then you guys as parents are going to be worried at home. You end up acting as intermediary. That communication and building that relationship between the housemaster or housemistress and the student is really important. And the first way to do that is about getting your child to open up. Uh, great, Paul. I think that's really excellent advice. Um, uh, Liz, let's let's hear what, what, what you suggest. I, I'm surprised that no one has yet mentioned Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> There's very, there's very little, I think, to add in, in, in on top of what's already been said. Um, but I would say to come, you know, open-minded, I absolutely agree with, and come prepared to ask questions. You know, we, we always say that no question um, is too big or too small. Um, and if you need to ask the same question more than once, ask it, whether that's a parent or a, or a pupil. Um, you know, have some of your favourite things, favourite pictures to make that place your own when you get here. Um, some of the children will bring in obviously the favourite toys, but the favourite cushion, the, the favourite rug for the floor, um, but something so that it feels um, homely and feels special. And I think in terms of um, communication, um, I absolutely agree with, with knowing how you're going to contact home um, really helps a child. I'd be very wary of doing a fixed time every night, though, because if you're outside having lots of fun on an Astro playing football with your mates and your mum can't get hold of you, then that mum starts to worry. Um, so I think, you know, that that's where that the parent has got to try as hard as it is sometimes not to worry when they don't hear. Um, and, you know, you, your child will get in touch, but sometimes they might just be too busy having fun. Thanks, Liz. Dragon, have you got anything to add? Uh, preparation it, tips? It's funny you should mention uh, Harry Potter. We saw Emma Watson start her acting career here at the Dragon quite a few years ago. Um, on a practical level, for preparation for boarding, we do believe that um, communication between the families and the boarding houses is key. And actually, the children getting to understand the routines about boarding and knowing about bedtimes and on a very practical note, it's really helpful if the children actually know how to change a duvet and put a pillowcase on, because that helps with just daily life with the dragon. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as a house parent, you can be a really great guide. You, we work very much with the parents. So if we felt that a child was perhaps phoning home a little bit too often, whilst we would never stop a child from having sit and then stop them from calling, we would just you know talk to them about how how it's making them feel and whether there's a better time in the day that they can call on. And also having that conversation with parents, making sure that it's sort of tailored to them as a family. And then I want to echo what Gus says, it's really helpful if children, when they take off their clothes, they put them into a nice neat pile. And um, I think a lot of our, we have this sort of lost sock economy we talk about in there. We've got socks everywhere. So if, if children are able to pair up their socks and put things neatly um, when they take them off, I think that's a really helpful thing to do. <laughs> that sounds like wish fulfillment to me. Not, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> My my fifteen year old can't pair his socks. Um, yeah. The, <laughs> um, um, yeah, those are all really good tips. I think we ought to we we ought now to address um, some of the more complex issues. I mean, uh, Harry was talking about being at the Dragon um, quite a long time ago now. I won't uh, maybe tw almost twenty years, Harry. And and uh, I wondered how much things have changed 
Um, I mean, particularly, um, obviously, you know, we, we all read a lot about safeguarding issues um, and uh, and privacy for children. And so, so you know, do your schools still have big dormitories? Uh, how 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 different are things from when many of our li listeners were at school? Uh, maybe let's start with actually Harry. Do you want to talk a bit about 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 how it was, and then and then we'll let the dragon come in and then go around. Sure. Yeah. Well, as uh, the dragon touched upon, when you first start at the school, you're in much smaller houses, so you're only with uh, one other year group, uh, and the houses feel very much like a family. So probably no more than twenty twenty five students. Uh, then in my day, you all went into a centralised house, Charwell, uh, which is now a girls' house, um, but there are about 40 or 50 of you. Uh, and then you separated into um, senior houses, either Gungadin or Schoolhouse, uh, whereas in Schoolhouse, and that replicates essentially what a senior school uh, is like, so giving you the ultimate uh, preparation. Obviously, we didn't have mobile telephones, um, which I guess is probably one of the main differences in terms of communicating you'd have a BT card where you could press 141 and dial in. Um, but the, the, the contact you had with parents was, was minimal um, and it was a little bit more structured in having um, exiats every three weeks. Uh, you'd rarely go home in between that time. Parents could come and see you in matches, um, but you were very much kind of at school during term time uh, and an exiat and half term was obviously a privilege, but not something you did every week. And now, as the Dragon and other schools have highlighted, they don't have Saturday school, and it seems that lots of students leave during the weekends. All right, Gus and Nelly, how has it changed? Well, in many ways, the Dragon has retained its core values, but actually the Dragon boarding, we give the home from home experience. The boarding houses have been refurbished and are in the process of being creating a home environment, which is ideal for these children and they really enjoy their time and actually privacy is key and uh, the showers are more private and the bedrooms um, have less beds in nowadays and actually on the subject of phones the children don't have mobile phones at the dragon the, they hand them in uh, to house parents and they just use them for travel um, and the main line of communication is email and um, phone calls to parents and there's much more flexibility these days. Children and parents want to see each other a lot more and we've facilitated that. But uh, on the subject of safeguarding, it's absolutely key to our life at the Dragon. We have a very strong pastoral team who provide the safeguarding right across the school and actually everyone's responsibility is safeguarding. Yeah, and I think that, so we're, we're actually at number 26, which I, I think is, is where you were. Um, and everybody who comes in sort of says how much it feels just like a normal home um, and I think the girls do too they just feel like it's a normal home it's just a bit bigger and um, I think that there's still that very much the idea of it it is a bit like a sleepover um, they know that in the week that there are the expectations that you know lights out and they've had a very busy day and we talk to them about the importance of sleep but on a weekend, you know, we'll often, if we don't have very many children in, we'll all go together in one dormitory. They'll get them, they'll um, have a, that sort of sleepover vibe, which is really nice um, because they just feel like it's a, yeah, a home from home. Thank you very much. We're, we're actually starting to run out of time, unfortunately, uh, which is a shame because I, I think we could carry on this conversation for another hour. Um, the, um, uh, the obvious point to make is that all all of the exhibiting schools are going to be at our summer fair at Hurlingham on the 22nd of June. So do come and continue the conversations with them there. They'd be delighted to ask, answer all your questions. Um, I'd like to thank all the panel today. It's been a really, really fascinating and, and very open discussion, I think, which has been great. Next week, uh, we're looking at a very hot topic. We're looking at school fees. And we're talking about affordability, uh, discussing bursaries, second child discounts and school fees planning with leading school fee experts uh, from the Good Schools Guide and Bruin Dolphin. Uh, and that, that's at this time next week. So uh, just, just to say thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.